How's it going guys? So in today's tutorial, I'm going to show you a really cool trick that I was able to create some really cool variation when uh, working on this really cool kind of scaly kind of lizard material here. And I thought this would be a really cool thing to show you guys. Super versatile trick. Uh, but before I get into that, today's video is brought to you by the Material Builder Suite. The Material Builder takes all the time out of creating unique, complex procedural materials. With over 100 group nodes ranging from custom patterns and textures you've never seen before to special nodes that give your materials sand, glitter, and many other really cool effects. Using a plug and play workflow, you can make hundreds of unique materials made for cycles. Hit the link in my description if you want to learn more. Now let's get back into the tutorial. All right, so we're back. So I'm going to show you how I created the variation. You can see how th this is just a regular Voronoi texture. I used the distance to edge right here to get this very rocky kind of, um, you know, lizard scaly kind of material. But I wanted to get some variation. I didn't want it to just be one sort of um, the same scale of objects here, if you, not objects, but texture. You can see how I'm changing the scale. That's what I'm talking about. So originally it was, you know, it just kind of looked the same and I wanted it to be different. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to delete all of this and we're going to kind of start from scratch. So all I have is a uh, principled material and we're using Eevee to preview that this works in cycles as well. We just have a principled and a bump node. So I'm just going to move this up here. And uh, let's go ahead, shift A and get a color ramp, of course, to have a little bit more control over all the scales and things like that. So I'm going to plug that into the height. This isn't necessary, but I always do it. All right, so what I'm going to do is get a Voronoi. So search Voronoi material, Voronoi node, um, and I'm going to hit control T, having the node wrangler add-on enabled. Uh, we're going to plug the object coordinate into the vector. So right here, I'm going to click on F1 and go to distance to edge. Now, what I'm showing you literally works with any pattern. I'm just showing it to showing it to you with this pattern because I'm currently working on a material that uses it. So it was applicable to me. So I'm going to get a really small pattern, uh, I mean, really small scale, or in this case, a big scale for these um, little things here. What I want to do is I'm hit shift D and duplicate another one, put the vector into the vector. And in this case, I'm gonna bring my scale down to like 85. And let's get a mix RGB in my X RGB, plug it there, plug the distance into color two. And you're gonna see kind of those bigger pieces kind of trying to figure out how to bust through the top. Um, what we're gonna do is tell it how to go through to the top. So I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna get a noise texture in OI, noise texture. And this right here, this factor is gonna be able to tell these two guys where to sort of show up where to present themselves on this on this object. So what I'm gonna do here is actually, I'm gonna duplicate this color ramp and uh, we're actually gonna need the color ramp in this instance. Plug that there, we're gonna plug the vector into the vector. So now, if we play with this color ramp, it'll make a more obvious um, change. So there you go. I made it have a really hard edge just to demonstrate to you guys more obviously. This noise texture is now revealing this bottom bigger piece. So now that it's linear, we can bring this over and give it a more organic looking um, fade into the next texture, just like that. And then we can just bring up that scale, tell you like, you know, the variation. You can also play with, um, I'm gonna bring the roughness all the way down. And you can also bring up your scale, different things like that. But now you have a really nice um, variation of um, scale and size and it gives you a more organic feeling to your material rather than it just being just one uniform scale of this Voronoi pattern. So yeah, bring it up a little bit more. So now you have a really nice looking material that looks much more organic than it just being one Voronoi texture. And this is applicable with a lot of different things. Uh, for example, this one right here, I made this greeble looking material. I used the same exact idea. So I have these two Voronoi um, textures here. This is the really uh, the big pieces. So if I play with the double, you can see that's the big pieces. This is the small pieces. And then I used another Voronoi texture to tell them where to be. So now instead of it just being one cube with a bunch of small pieces of Voronoi, you have these really big Voronoi blocks and these really small Voronoi blocks, and you're able to make this very Borg looking, Griebel looking material very easily, and you get something that you otherwise would not have 
with just your standard Voronoi. Now I'm using Voronoi a lot with this. This works with uh, magic textures, brick textures, literally anything it works for. So, um, you know, use this as you will, take this as you will. It's a super versatile process. Um, so yeah, thank you guys for watching and I uh, hope you learned something.